What's up guys? Welcome to the very first episode of The Wood Rat. Uh, welcome to the rat's nest. Uh, what we're going to do today for our first video, uh, you know, a lot of people wait till down the road to do these shop tour videos and all that, but you know, the thing is, I mean, for a small space, I've really got this set up really well and it works really efficiently. You know, the thing is, a lot of the time what they do is they will make carts that roll over, put things on wheels so you can move them in and out when you, when you need to, uh, you know, kind of a, a convertible shop. Uh, mobile, everything's mobile. You know, you, when you when you need this, you pull this out. When you're finished with that, you put it back. You need to go over here and use the planner, you pull it out, you use it, put it back. Um, you know, I'm not knocking what those guys do. Uh, you know, they're great ideas. And for a small space, they work. But my own personal opinion, they only work for the hobbyist. The person who who's just doing like weekend projects and whatnot. Um, what I do here is, I, I'm a furniture builder. I build furniture, large pieces of furniture. I build uh, kitchen islands, uh, bathroom vanities, beds, nice stands, dressers, kitchen tables. I mean, the list goes on and on. So these are large pieces. And the thing is, is I've got to have, I got to have a good amount of room in the middle of my shop to be able to build these, these large pieces. So I can't, I can't just spread everything all over the shop because it eats up into my room, my, my assembly and finish room. To be efficient, to, to run it as a business, to be efficient, you, the rolling tools in and out and bringing them out when you need them, putting them away when you do I know it doesn't seem like much, but it adds up. It, it, it really becomes a huge inconvenience when you're trying to run a business. You, you, the whole convertible, mobile tool stations and all that, it just does not work in a commercial application. It just, it, it really doesn't. So I'll show you what I've done here. You might be surprised to know that I have two table saws in here. I have a large compressor, a radial arm saw. I have a chop saw for cutting my aluminum. I have a chop saw for cutting wood. I have a 12 inch planer, a six inch jointer, a drill press, uh, a sanding, belt sander and sanding disc, a large toolbox, and you know, a welder. And as you know, planers and chop saws and jointers and things like that, a lot of times when you're, you're, you're building something, you're starting with eight foot lumber, okay? So if you're going to run an eight foot piece of lumber through a chop saw or through a planer, you have to have eight feet on this side to run it through, and you gotta have eight feet on this side for it to come back out. Um, so more or less what that translates to is you have to have a planer sitting in the middle of a 16 foot wall, minimum. Um, you know, and I've got 20 feet, which it really isn't even a true 20 feet. It's a 20 foot building minus a seven, eight inches, something like that. So yeah, it's 19 and a half feet, minus two foot for my bench down here on the end as well. Um, so yeah, I have, you know, a chop saw, a metal chop saw, wood chop saw, planer, jointer, drill press, uh, and sander. So I got six tools that really need to be on a 16 foot wall all by themselves. Each one needs its own space. I don't know too many people that have a shop large enough to accommodate all of that. So I think you'd be pretty impressed with what I've done here. Um, you know, I'll give you a little quick rundown before I show you actually what I've done here, but I've, I've staggered pieces 
as I've raised and lowered and staggered in and out until I've gotten the six pieces of machinery that are designed to have their own wall. Uh, until I've got six pieces of machinery all where I can run an eight foot piece of lumber in one side and out the other or work on either side of a saw or a jointer without moving anything. I don't, none of my machinery in here is mobile. None of it. It's all stationary. All right, we'll start over here where I was telling you about my equipment wall. Um, here is my disc and belt sander with a uh, drill press right next to it. Here is my six inch jointer planer. And right next to it is my 12 inch planer, thickness planer. Um, I have a router mounted to the side of it. We'll, we'll go over that later. Moving on down, we have the first chop saw here is my wood cutting chop saw. And then I have the Makita, which I use only for cutting aluminum. Okay, let me show you what I've done here. So like I was saying, you got your chop saws, your thickness planer, and a planer joiner. Okay, and as y'all may know, may or may not know, uh, each one of these pieces of equipment to feed an eight foot board in one side and out the other, require it to be in the middle of an eight foot, or I'm sorry, 16 foot wall. So what I've done here is I have taken my thickness planer and set it in more or less proximity to the middle of the wall. And I've set my chop saws up to the left of that. And what I've done is I have aligned the table of my planer exactly level with the table of this wood cutting chop saw and to the table of this aluminum cutting chop saw. Okay, now from this wood cutting chop saw over here to that wall down there is more than eight feet. So if I'm cutting lumber or aluminum from these saws here, and I need it to be to the left of me, I have eight foot, okay? Now, if I wanna go the other direction, I've got that set up to where you, the planer will just be raised up, and the fences on the two chop saws are also directly lined up with the planer so that when you're cutting anything on these chop saws, it'll go right through that planer and out the other side, so I have 10 to 12 feet to the right of the chop saws. And when I'm planing lumber, I can feed an eight foot board in this side and out feed eight foot of board on this side. Now, let me show you what I've done over here with my planter joiner, my drill press and belt sander, okay? Now the thing is with the planter joiner, I could have set this up to run eight foot boards in one side and out the other, okay? But I didn't, what I did here is I set it up to do about six and a half, seven foot. And the main reason I do that is 95% of what I build. Um, very rarely do I go over five feet, which, you know, 60 inches. So there's just no need to, to have it set up for eight foot it, you know it is on wheels if need be i can pull it out and do larger stuff but i just very rarely end up having to do that so i have what i've done here also is the table of the planter joiner is higher than this table here including the drill press it clears this here and you know what i do here sorry about that you know, is I swing this to the back like this. Okay, so when I'm joining material, it comes down here, clears this drill press, and also clears this belt sander, and I have about six and a half, seven foot to this wall here. Okay, 
And then on the outfeed side, what I've done here is when I set that thickness planer up and them chop saws up, I set them out from the wall just enough so that when I run my boards through this jointer, they shoot right on down here and they clear this planer and they clear them chop saws and I have a roller securely mounted to the floor here and I can run my boards right on through. So basically what this translates to is I have taken four or five pieces of machinery here that would normally need around a 16 foot wall all on their own. Now I don't know too many people that have four or five 16 foot walls they can dedicate to one piece of machinery. So, you know, if you're looking, if you have a small shop, a small space, and you're looking to run a lot of equipment and be efficient and end up with a lot of open floor space in the middle, this is the way to go. I'm not knocking what these guys do with these you know, mobile stations and rollover tables and whatnot. Those are fantastic and great ideas. Um, but if you're trying to be efficient and make money at what you're doing in a small space, this is how you do it. Let me show you what I've done over here on this side of the shop. This is uh, where I got my table saw set up over here on this side. And again, this is a 14 by 20 building which translates to 19 and a half feet. Um, so I'm sure you noticed that I have a deep freezer in my shop. <laughs> Probably not too common to see that. Um, honestly, I just have nowhere else to put this thing. I just don't. So it has to go in here. But uh, it's really not a problem. Cause what, what I've done here, this, this over here is the main table saw I use. Uh, cast iron top, you know, belt drive, older model Craftsman, beautiful saw. Love this thing. Works fantastic. Um, you know, if you're looking, if you're looking for a shop saw, this is the way to go. You know, it's okay to start out with the uh, tabletop, bench top, table saws. Uh, you know, I'm not knocking them. They're they're great. They work. I used one for many many years. But if you can get your hands on something like this, you know, this is the way to go. And if you shop around, you can get these things pretty reasonable. I think I paid like 150 bucks for this thing off of Marketplace. Uh, you know, just shop around, be patient, and you'll find you'll find the great deals. So what I've done here is I've got it set up in the middle of this wall. Okay. And what I've done here is I have this bench top model table saw that I don't really use. I don't. It still works. I just I just don't use it. So what I've done is it sits, I've got it actually sitting up on some wood uh, so that the table of this one sits ever so slightly lower than the table of this one, okay? And you're probably wondering what that piece of wood is that I have on the front of this table saw here. What that is, is when I'm cutting quarter inch plywood, you know how flexible it is, when it comes off the end here, it, it starts to fall. It starts to bend and droop down. Well, you know, I had to keep coming around this side of the table or getting somebody else to help me to help it clear the top of this table saw. So what I've done is this piece of wood here is actually at an angle. And when it comes off of this table saw and starts to bend down, I stay in front of the saw and just keep pushing it It'll hit this piece of wood here and actually glide and raise right back up on top of the table of this one here. And then fortunately my deep freezer here is about an inch or so lower than the top of this table saw. So, you know, what that translates to is I can take an eight foot sheet, piece of sheet good and feed it in this side and run it all the way through, rip it all the way down, all eight feet, all the way out this side, and to the wall with inches to spare, without having to round up somebody to come hold the plywood and, and set up rollers and, and all that nonsense. You know, I can pull a piece of plywood down, throw it up on here on its table saw, and rip it down without any help at all. Now on this side over here, I did lack just a little bit 
of eight feet to that bench where you see that radial arm saw down there. I, I was lacking eight feet. I couldn't quite get it. So what I've done here is I have taken the table of this radial arm saw and I've lowered it down because these things raise and lower anyway. So I've lowered the table down so that when you're cutting a piece of plywood, now this table for the radial arm saw is lower than the table saw so I can get my plywood in here and rip it down, okay? Which, you know, really isn't inconvenience at all. When I get ready to use this radial arm saw here, you know, it, it just folds out of the way when I get ready to use it. I just bring this thing out here like this and I'm ready to rock and roll. I do, do what I need to do on the radial arm saw. Uh, once I'm finished, you know, I just put it back against the wall and go right back to cutting plywood. So yeah, pretty good setup, you know. Like I said, I've got a, I've got a fairly good amount of machinery in here. You know, I got the, the radial arm saw, the compressor, two table saws, two chop saws, thickness planer, joiner, drill press, belt sander, and I can use any of it without moving anything at all. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to your table saw, it, I mean, obviously you've noticed that my table saw is up against the wall in my shop, okay? And that typically is kind of unusual. What most people do is they'll have it set up in the middle of their shop. And honestly, I'm a little confused by that. Uh, and the reason I say that is because, you know, if you're building things, especially furniture and cabinetry, um, you know, you need assembly space, okay? You've got to have some room to put these things together, okay? And if you've got your table saw set up in the middle of your shop, where in the world are you gonna put this stuff together, okay? And if you stop and think about how much sense that doesn't make to put it in the middle of a shop, when you're cutting on the table saw, even if you're cutting up to a four by eight sheet of plywood, okay? The most you're going to do is cut it down the middle. So the most you're going to be cutting to the left side of your table, I'm mean, sorry, the right side of your table saw is 24 inches. Well, you know, from that wall there to that blade is just slightly more than 24. So what in the world do I need this table saw sitting in the middle of my shop taking up my assembly space when I hardly ever cut anything to the right of it. You know, everything you're cutting most of the time is gonna to be to the left of that saw. And most of the time, you're not gonna cut more than 24 inches anyway. Even if you, okay, you know, even if you need a piece of plywood that is 38 inches wide, um, you know, if you know a little bit about woodworking, you know that all you're going to do is remove 10 inches of that to get your 38, and that 10 inches is gonna come off the right side. So there's just no reason or any sense to a table saw being set up in the middle of your shop, taking up all your assembly space. It just doesn't make sense. Now, if you hadn't already noticed in the videos, what I've done for lumber storage here is I've built these brackets that I've mounted on the wall. And this is obviously mounted above my table saw area and it's mounted high enough that I can cut anything without any issues or any problems whatsoever. Uh, on this rack here, I keep two by sixes, uh, two by twelves, you know, dimensional lumber like that, okay? And then over here, on this side of the shop again, which I'm sure you've seen before, I have two more racks, also high enough to not be an issue using any of the machinery in the shop. I keep all my one by material on top and I keep uh, two by fours, uh, four by fours and other dimensional lumber like that on the bottom, okay? 
Now you're probably wondering, well, where in the world does he keep his plywoods and stuff like that? And that's that's the problem I had when I moved into this shop. I'm looking around and I'm thinking to myself, where in the world am I going to keep my plywood, you know? So what I've done is this right here, okay? I've gone up into the rafter area and I built this rack, okay? And obviously the heavier plywoods, my three quarter plywoods I have on this bottom shelf here. And then above it on this side to the left here, I keep my half inch plywood. And then to the right up top, I keep the quarter inch plywood. And I've got plenty of room to slide that down when I need to use it. Now, since how we're already facing that direction, we'll talk about my tool wall, okay? Now, this isn't done to look cool, to show off how many tools I have. This is legitimately done out of convenience. I'm not much of a toolbox guy. Uh, you know, when I'm building something and I'm busy and trying to get things done, I don't wanna be digging through drawers and toolboxes trying to find what I need. The most efficient, easiest way to, you know, to access your tools is have a pegboard wall and hang these things, man. There's just no reason to put them in a toolbox. You know, you hang these things on a wall like that, uh, you know, you need the sander, you spin around, you grab it, and you, you roll. And you need a drill, you turn around, you grab it. Uh, you know, I keep everything on a wall. I can see it, I know where it's at, I can grab it, I can use it, and I can throw it back on the wall, no problem at all. Imagine trying to put all that into a toolbox. It's crazy. So that's pretty much it for the large equipment uh, as far as how I have it set up to be efficient and save space. Uh, we'll go over some of the smaller things that I've done to save space and improve efficiency in other videos, okay? Uh, you know, when I decided to give up my commercial space and work from home, you know, I was I was pretty worried. I went from easily more than t double the amount of square footage that I have here. And I was afraid that I wasn't gonna be able to get it all in here and make it work. But as you can see, you know, it's all in here and it all works well and I don't have to move anything. And look at all this floor space I have. Up there in front of that bench, I have an eight by 10 air open area that I can assemble pieces in. You know, you move back here toward the table saws and whatnot and here's another nine by six area. And it's actually a little more than that if you include this space right here in front of me in front of these saws. Uh, planers and whatnot, but uh, you know, look at all this open space, okay? And this all took up twice the square footage at my commercial space. So yeah, I mean, this is just, this is how you do it. This is how you make it efficient and you make it work and you make money. This is, this is the way to go. Thank you for watching and be sure to join us next time for another episode of The Wood Rat. Please like, subscribe, and follow. Don't forget to turn on that notification button.